gentlemen, um, and welcome to another edition to uh, <laughs> the Grand Boulevard Coalition. I think the uh, the screen behind you uh, says something different, but do you are don't make no mistake about it. You are watching the Grand Boulevard um, Coalition show. This is a live show. 312-738-1060. 312-738-1060. Please join us in the conversation. And tonight we have a very exciting guest. Um, is no stranger to me. Um, and probably not too many of you. Uh, Ms. Cecilia Butler, who is the president of the Washington Park Advisory Council and the Washington Park Advocacy Council. Good evening, Cecilia. Good evening, Obadelli. How are you? I'm, I, I'm pretty good now. Yeah, it's been, yeah. I'm in a familiar area. Oh, okay. It's been a, been a long time. It's good yes, to have you. Um, so let's just dive right into it because we only have a short time and we can go on. And I got a, um, an update uh, video that you've uh, brought in that I'm going to share with the audience a little later. Talk to us about um, the Washington Park Advisory Council and what is the purpose and goal of this group? Well, for years, I sat in your seat yeah. and told the Can TV audience about Washington Park Advisory Council and the fact that every park, every playground, every building within the park district was entitled to citizen representation and that we have been part of the Washington Park Advisory Council since uh, Harold Washington said there must be citizen participation. And that was in the mid-80s. So um, I, I showed maps, I brought papers, I did everything I could to let people know that like any other form of city government, meaning the Board of Education, Chicago Police, CTA, uh, including, uh, what is it, uh, public housing. They and we must be part of the discussion because if, if we aren't and if we don't, they'll take it over like we don't exist. Um, tell us a little bit about the, the, the um, Washington Park Advisory Council. Well, we've been meeting, like I said, since the mid-'80s. We meet the third Wednesday of every month. I'm sorry, strike that. Advocacy Council. Okay, well, this is a newer group. Yeah. And uh, I think as we were moving, as Can TV was moving to the new uh, location, we formed a citizen group. This is strictly for residents people that live in Washington Park. And what I used to do is give the boundaries. That's from 51st Street South to 63rd Street, from King Drive West to the railroad tracks and a half a block further west to the Dan Ryan plus the park. So everyone that lives within that area, uh, we invite them to come to the Washington Park Residence Advocacy Council. We meet twice a month. That's the first Thursday of the month at 6.30 and the third Saturday of the month at 9 a.m. And that, of course, is at 5531 South King Drive, Washington Park Fieldhouse. Yeah, so um, Cecilia, you know, and as a part of the Grand Boulevard Coalition, our mission is to focus on uh, preventative measures, specifically to prevent underage drinking and drugging in the community by creating these awareness campaigns. Um, and uh, we've just evolved a bit to start focusing in on violence and some of the other um, uh, problematic issues that are facing young people and young adults in the Grand Boulevard community. Why don't you tell me a little bit about some of the, I guess, the, the good and the bad. So um, we can talk about the, the positive things that you've been working on, but then tell me about some of the trouble areas in Washington Park. Um, or our audience, if you will. Well, our campaign, it started uh, almost almost a year ago. In fact, due to Commissioner um, Doykin, uh, no, not Doykin. Boykin. Boykin, right. Who's got a Thank meeting you. tonight, in fact. In yes, Annie, he does. Annie, 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 in Inglewood. In Inglewood at um, 63rd and Stewart at Antioch Missionary Baptist Church. In fact, when we get off the air, Commissioner Boykin, uh, uh, Reverend Andrew Ackery, and I'm, and I'm sorry to cut in on you, but uh -huh, you no brought problem. his name up. Uh, uh, Reverend Ackery and several other ministers are having a meeting tonight focusing on violence. Right. Again, tonight at 63rd and Stewart at Antioch is Reverend Dew. Yes. 63rd and Stewart. Um, and so if you live in that area, on the sound of my voice, you should go, especially if you're living in communities that's been uh, under siege by um, um, this community violence that we've been facing. So thank you, for Celia, for even bringing the commissioner's name up. Well, proceed. Right. Well, what happened about a year ago, uh, you know, he sends out great information newsletters over the Internet. And he had this one that spearheaded 
uh, the uh, wording, hashtag respect life. Mm -hmm. And I said, I like that. So I got in contact with him. He then got me in contact with the um, with the organization, uh, and I didn't care, build organization yes. on the west side. Very familiar. Right, and uh, and I called them. I said I like hashtag respect life. I'm in, on the south side. Can I bring that to the south side? They said, Yeah, yeah, you can use it. And I went running. And I haven't stopped running since. As you can see, that's what these buttons say. I mean, that's I can right. zoom in, but it's respect for life. And, and, and I think we, as just community folks, again, ordinary people, um, can, can, can do great by forming coalitions, by talking to each other, just based off of getting communication from the Cook County Commission, the Boykin, led to a movement, and which is one of the reasons why Ms. Butler is on, because as we moved around doing community take-backs and positive laudering events, I've stumbled upon the Respect Life banners, and um, which has been very intriguing, because that's really what this is all about, a respect for life, respect for our fellow man uh, right. and mankind in our community. And um, this community violence, this fratricism that, 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 that we are faced um, in the African-American community, it's just, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. So, um, Cecilia, we, we talked about some positive. What are, what are some of the troubling areas in, in, in Washington Park? Well, I personally don't like to think that there's really any troubling areas, but people do, unfortunately, oh. are murdered in my community. One of the last ones that really hit me is that a lady was sleeping on her couch yeah. on 53rd and King Drive in the basement. And she is no longer with us because a bullet went through the window and, and hit her as she was sleeping. Now, those are the bad things. You know, there's yeah. one thing and I, and that it bothers me about our local police department. I appreciate them, but what they usually say, they were, it was gang-related. These people are part of the game. Yeah. Now, I didn't hear that about this lady. I right, didn't hear that you about didn't her. hear about yeah. her. But I didn't also hear that it's been solved either. So. Exactly. But uh, about a month before that, two ladies were driving down Wabash in 55th Street. They were shot and murdered. And the first thing that the police said, that, uh, that one of them was a, gang, a former gang member. And then yeah. you find out that she worked for the CTA. She was an upright citizen with a job. And they never corrected that. Yeah, well, actually, it was my understanding because I was in Springfield at the time, and it was like breaking news um, all the way down to Springfield um, that two women were shot. One of them worked for CTA, and one was a postal worker. Mm -hmm. um, and so I recall that incident. And, um, yeah, it happened on 53rd Street um, at, a, at, at about 8, 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. I do recall that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so... In, in all of what we're talking about, even in your campaign, talk to us about coalition building and what are some of the groups that you work with before we take the call, uh, groups that you work with that you mind discussing that is a part of your coalition in Washington Park? Well, we, our organization uh, applied for a Chicago Community Trust grant last year, mm -hmm. and that's why, how we were able to put cups in the park. We have about eight stations in the park of cups on fences. We have nine locations of banners throughout the community. And what we then decided this year, we didn't get a grant, but we, we asked, asked them, who did get, get a grant? Well, one of the first names I saw was my good buddy here. Uh -huh. So I got in contact with him, and there's a couple yeah. other people that I want to get in contact with who got a grant. Yeah. Because if a, if a funder is going to fund us to do X, Y, and Z in our community, for our community, we better do the right yeah. thing. And yeah. and that's... Yeah, I didn't know they list my name. But oh, yeah. yes, they did. Because <laughs> then I saw Grand Boulevard and saw you on KNTV. Yeah. I yeah. knew how to get in yeah. contact with yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we did, so the Grand Boulevard Prevention Services, which is the 501c3, I'm, I'm going to get to your caller. Just be patient with me. Um, which is the 501c3 um, community group of Grand Boulevard Prevention, a uh, Grand Boulevard Coalition, received the grant from the Chicago Community Trust to do community take-backs, uh, positive laundering events um, in hot 
pockets around the Grand Boulevard community. And I should give the boundaries of Grand Boulevard <laughs> uh, for the sake of having Miss Cecilia Butler here. Our boundaries are 51st Street on the north, uh, um, and we go north to uh, really strike the south. that 51st Street on the south, be clear, on the north side of 51st Street. 51st Street on the south end, 35th Street on the north. We go east to Cottage Grove, um, a little bit up to the lake, but really east to Cottage Grove, and um, west to the Dan Ryan. Um, and in that, we have um, we encompass maybe two police districts, the second district and a little bit of the ninth district, because we um, and, and a small portion of the ninth district, because we go and do some work over in the Fuller Park community. But mainly, um, but we but we've spread out, and of late, because of all the violence and shootings, again, we've 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 been across 51st Street. Who um, this year have seen more than, in my opinion, more than uh, normal. A, a plethora amount of shoes, but we we got a caller, and I don't want to keep the caller waiting. Mm -hmm. Caller, you on the air? Yes. Good evening. Good evening, good sir. Evening. How are you? Yes. Uh, you know, they say it takes a village to raise a child. Why can't the north, south, east, and west parts of the city get together so we can, so we can raise the child of this city? So, you know, because there's been coalitions, hundreds of them, for the last twenty years. Some of them have done some good, but not enough because you see people are still getting killed every weekend. So wouldn't it be better for the city, all four sides of it, to get together and maybe we can all get together and work this problem out, you know, amongst us. Thank you. Well, I call you, I call you there. All right. Uh, thank you for your call. Appreciate it. Well, I, and I appreciate what you said. Well, the, the one solution that came from the city yesterday, I, um, there was some alderman um, int introduced a resolution that wants to call for parental responsibility, holding parents accountable for their children who commit violent crime or crime. Done that. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't, so I don't know where that takes us. You know, listen. And in this last, after three years without a state budget, we finally just got one. So I think there are a lot of factors into why our community has been under siege. We have high levels of unemployment. I mean, I know people think that I'm just making an excuse, but no, and, no, and until true. until these factors are no longer or these, I think, circumstances are no longer on the table, then we can have a debate about what are the other causes. But high levels of unemployment... Um, you have the educational deprivation, the social deprivation in our right. communities. And, 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 and I do believe we've had this kind of prison industrial complex that over the last 20 years it just existed in our community where this revolving door recycling of people coming out not having the appropriate opportunities to, to, to better themselves. So, and we've all heard about the study of three of uh, third graders that people can go into a classroom and identify those that they expect to be in jail in the future. That by is their something third grade, wrong. Yeah, by exactly. Third grade test is something wrong with that. And obviously it's not the people that are existing, it's somebody else above us that are playing these games. Well, you know, I, I just always question Cecilia, why is it just us? And I think that's that that is the one that I wrestle with daily and stress about. Why is it overwhelmingly the African-American community, even when we talk about these disparities? So, like, we have this drug-free communities grant um, that normally would go to rural white communities. So right. we are in an urban environment uh, prior to um, the previous administration, and I'm talking about the presidential administration. These type of grants didn't exist within the urban communities. Right. And I'm going to speak urban communities, specifically more black communities, the, these, these, these drug um, 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 programs or anti-drugs or underage drinking and drugging programs basically existed in rural communities. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and, and now, you know, they've added to the budget, you know, some $40, 50000000 million to deal with opioid overdosing. Exactly. Um, <laughs> and we've had crack, crack for decades. It's amazing. And, and, I, and I, I like to joke, but I'm being serious right. about it. We, we haven't had true. a harrowing using problem, we've had exactly. a hair and selling problem. But my, my, my point is, what causes these things to happen? So, I, I, and, and I know that we're here to talk about Grand Boulevard and Washington Park, but I'm 
thankful for Commissioner Boykin because he's doing the right thing. He's going on this listening to around the city and he's galvanizing community leaders and ministers. And tonight at Antioch uh, Baptist Church on 63rd and Stewart, the meeting will start in 15 minutes. So if you're in the area of uh, Antioch and um, you're concerned about the community violence, I encourage you to go over and um, see what uh, Reverend Dew and Reverend Ackery and uh, Richard, uh, Commissioner Richard Boykin are talking about tonight um, as it relates to violence. But back to uh, uh, Grand Boulevard in Washington Park, Cecilia. So what do you see as the encouraging points of, of, of community building or, or forming great relationships? Do you work well with the police commander in the, uh, well, in the area? I, I have met her. Okay. Uh, what? Ever since we put up our first sign, I asked everybody, what do you think about hashtag respect life? And I have not heard a negative comment yet. Okay. So for me, that's positive. The most important thing is that we do have those ministers in Inglewood tonight, yeah. our West Side people. Now, Commissioner Boykin, we found out today, he grew up in Inglewood. Oh, but the Reverend uh, Du, Acri, and others, they are from the West Side, yeah. which means that we, if, like the first caller, wanted us to do something together, it's happening. Yeah. It's happening. And the most important thing that I feel that we're not going to do, and that's give up. Well, and that's true, and we, we're definitely not going to do that. But I, I believe also in the comp, uh, the in 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 this in the, the the noted adage, you know, drop your anchor where you are. I think that every one of us who live in a community um, can do something. We can get involved, and um, all of all it takes is 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 working collaboratively. Listen, Tuesday night, Tuesday night, we won't be on the air, but this Tuesday night, August the first, is National Night Out. It's a national crime. Prevention Awareness Night. If everybody on your block who lives on a block come outside between the hours of 5 and 8, bring your grill, and then I mean, you don't have to get a permit. Bring your grill out, just call your alderman's office, whoever your alderman is, and say, hey, listen, my block is coming out. We're going to be on this block. We're going to occupy this block. We're going to have food. The neighbor's going to, we're going to potluck, and we're going to just stay out here to send a message that not on my block. It's National Night Out, and it's done for a purpose because that should have the lowest amount of crime. Now, people, you know, we can complain all we want. We can talk about what ifs and what others should be doing. But the power is more of us, and I truly believe this, in more, there are more good people yes. in communities and in neighborhoods and, and the bad actors. But I think what happens to us is that we become so shallow. Some of us are afraid, uh, lack the courage. Um, and, and most people don't even talk to their neighbors. I, and, and I mean, and I, and I don't want to hypocrite because I barely talk to mine, uh, to be frank with you. But um, I know them. And, and if I needed to galvanize and, and do something on my block, I would. Unfortunately, um, there's only like six of us that live there, and that's it, and it's, that's vacant. So we don't much have much of those type of problems. And then um, there, there's a, a security that patrols the, the, the area anyhow. So my, my only point is that when you don't have that and, and you have neighbors, you guys should be conversing. You should be talking. You should know who your alderman is. You should know who your state rep is. You should know who the police commander is. Yes. You should know who the beat officers are for your cap area. I mean, these are just simple things. And some, you can go online. I mean, everybody's got an internet, I want to believe. I don't want to be that ignorant, but I believe, well, at least I know you got a smartphone. And if you don't, um, I see you them out in front of You can go to the local library. Well, and then if you, you visit any of these local grocery establishments in the community, there are some folks out there talking about free government phones. Now, I don't know how you get them, but it seemed to be various simple processes. I see folks lined up for them all the time. It's really no excuses what I'm saying to you um, for lack of involvement, for you, a lack of participation in the community. What do you think about that, Cecilia? Well, I, it makes sense. If that was the answer... And it should be the answer, that we all get out and appreciate our neighborhood um, to have. I wish I, I knew that there were uh, a little more talk about April 1. I'm sorry, August 1st. August 1st, yeah. Right, because they should be pushing it like we oh, push guess. everything else. Uh, and it's really supposed to be the police and their community relations office doing it, just so you know that. Right, well, they should have signs up. I agree. You know, I believe in signage. So 
Um, it should be a big Respect for Life movement in Washington Park that night, Tuesday night. Exactly. Every block should be represented by Respect for Life. Right. We have a little plan going, but okay. But next time I'm on your show, I'll I'll be able to show our our new placards that we want all at least a hundred residents to have hashtag Respect Life in their windows. That's wonderful. How about the businesses? Do they support you by putting up signs? Well, I haven't got to that point okay, yet. Okay, okay, okay. But, um, but they're next. Okay, that's great. They're next. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to show the viewers a little bit of the work that you've been doing, and then we're going to come back and get back into the show and take some calls. So, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, stay tuned. Washington Park and Parliament, Community Area 40. We are a community on the verge of gentrification, violence, and mayhem. For our on the table dinner discussion, we decided to oh, you get on the table. 20 residents out who that wanted to have for me have lived me. in Washington Park over 20 years. We decided to fight violence with hashtag respect life. If We've had some this success, is, but not enough, and we wondered why. So, we decided to have an on-the-table dinner to talk about it, and a community forum days later. Sure. Four days after our dinner, we had our forum, which resulted in more than 40 Washington Park residents coming out to be updated on what was happening within the community. Is that in the we want to spend our thousand dollars on placards with hashtag respect life on them, going door to door. Now, this has been extremely positive within the community. Both policemen and women within Washington Park have said that this should be spread throughout the city because of the positive effect. To have hashtag respect life in the homes throughout Washington Park will show the world that we need business. All we ask is to respect life. I'm focusing on the strengths and capacities of the citizens who call that community home. At the center of the community building process lies its lies, the gifts of individual residents, stakeholders, stakeholders, and their knowledge, skills, resources, values, and commitment. This is our, our foundation for who we are as far as the Washington Park Residents Advocacy Council. We are proud members of Washington Park Community Area 1. Thank you, Obadelli. All right, so you great video, great video. Um, and, and it's award winning. Oh, award winning. Well, <laughs> yeah. listen, you know what? You know, I would just say this to you. Um, congratulations, great work. I would see those cups out. And if people don't know that I'm a big baseball guy, you know, I may not look at it. I put on some weight, but I trust me, I'm a baseball guy. I go out and watch the park and um, try to run around the field sometimes. Not much anymore. But a uh, big baseball person. And I would see those cups on all the diamonds out in Washington Park mm -hmm. every week. And, and I would wonder, well, who's doing this? I mean, and I, I would see the respect for life. And I thought it was always unique and a unique thing. Mm -hmm. And just even the on-the-table conversation. It goes back to the point that I made before we went into watching your video, mm -hmm. that community people coming together, having discussions about solutions. And, and that's all we're talking about from a coalition perspective. You can form coalitions within your block. Right. Um, but you, you should know who your police commander is. You should know who your, your, your community relations sergeant is. You should know who your beat officers are. You should know the active churches that are in your community that are actively trying to work to, to, to foster change in the community. And you definitely should know who your, your, your alderman is. And so, minimally. Um, minimally. And, I, and I thank that God that we have a great alderman that works with us. Alderman Pat Dowell at the Grand Wood of our coalitions have been very supportive, and Commander King mm -hmm. has been very supportive of our efforts and the work that we've been doing. And we have several other um, coalition members that I don't, I won't get a chance to name because we got to wrap up. But before we go, how can people reach you, Cecilia? Uh, come to our monthly meetings. We meet the first Thursday of the month, the third Saturday of the month, and we also meet for the Park Advisory Council the third Wednesday. Do you have a number where people can call you? 773-493-0754. Give that number again. 773-493-0754. Hey, listen, you've been watching the Grand Boulevard Coalition. Uh, I've been your host, Bamani Obadelli. We want to thank Can TV um, for this wonderful opportunity. If you need to reach 
um, the Grand Boulevard Coalition. Um, you can reach me, actually. I'm going to give you my phone number, 312-420-5582. Again, 312-420-5582. Remember, if, you're, if you, you want to get involved tonight, Commissioner Richard Boykin is having a violence prevention meeting at Antioch Missionary Baptist Church on 63rd and Stewart. Um, and then Tuesday night, it's National Night Out. Tuesday night, all over the city, all over the world, this is your time as a, as, as a resident, community leader, form, bring your block together, bring your neighbors together, take over those, those hot corners Tuesday night. Work, get in touch with your local area um, police department because they're kind of spearheading this thing or your alderman's office and get involved. We can all serve because we can all give back. Between now and next week, God bless. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.